So, here we are for uh, this session in Leading Voices in Utrecht 2022. A very cordial welcome to all of you, and especially also to my panel members. Um, we're very happy to um, welcome you here to a session to sharpen your mindset about funding and uh, partnerships. Now, what is a mindset? I don't know if everybody has actually thought about that term, but the idea is that we talk about your attitude to things. And it's interesting that we are with, uh, let's say, a, a relatively small audience today. And maybe that is also a symptom of what we are talking about. We're talking about funding. And many people think it's a difficult subject. It is something that we do not particularly want to busy ourselves with because we are busy with the content. We want to make music and produce events and stuff. And there is always this obstacle that we meet, but uh, there are specialists that can deal with that. And if they can't deal with that, then what often happens is that we simply give up or we do not do what we would have liked to do. And I think this is what we what, what our task is today is to talk about how can we overcome that attitude? How can we change or sharpen our mindset in such a way that everybody can actually say, OK, I know exactly what I want to do. And I think there are ways of getting there, of getting the funding um, and of enabling us, putting us in a position to actually do what we want to do and not to be stuck and to sit and to think we can't get any further. So here we are today with a positive message to the outside world. A very cordial welcome to everybody. We hope that you will enjoy this session. I'm very happy that we are joined today by uh, three extremely uh, knowledgeable persons. Obviously, the Swiss delegation in a funding discussion has to be very, very great. So I come from Switzerland. My name is Jeroen Schreiner, and I um, am the what they call in Dutch the moderator the presenter or the coordinator of this session. And I'm very happy that right next to me is Katrin Rengli, who's also from Switzerland. Um, and then we have Bostjan Usenik, who's from Slovenia. And we have Bart Dornewirt, who's from the Netherlands. Um, and each of them has a very special story to tell us. And I would like to give each of them the floor um, and each of them will then have a different story to tell, but we hope that these stories all together give you the mindset that you need to achieve your goals. Um, I would like to start by simply asking each of my panel members to introduce themselves by saying what their particular connection is with the topic of funding and partnerships. Please, Catherine, may I begin with you? Okay. <laughs> so, as you told, always I'm from Switzerland. I'm director of the European Youth Choir Festival in Basel. So I started with my job when I, 21 years ago, in 2001, it was my first festival. And after 21 years, I can say I've got the best job I, I could have. And the interesting thing in my job is that I'm responsible for everything. So first, I have to fund the money for my ideas. Then I've got the whole artistic part, and I've got the whole organizational part. So that's really, I've got the freedom that is at, to nowadays really unusual. And I'm happy about it uh, still now. So when I started, no, first probably because people are usually interested in how did I get such a job. So I think uh, I just, how long do I have to talk? Only very briefly now because you're only or talking about your connection to these topics. Oh, your story will okay. come later. Okay, huh? so my connection. Yes. <laughs> is when I started with my job, I thought it's great to have the side of the festival director to fund the money, but it's also a good thing to have the other side. So I decided to do only jobs around this festival director's job that help the festival to grow up. So I was on the other side in different positions 
I was also, I worked for the national government and we realized a program for young musicians, uh, for children and young people, they want to make music. So I developed um, the criteria how to spend the money of Switzerland to give it to this uh, to young children and uh, young people to make music. And I'm also in, uh, as, uh, in Suiza. Suiza is the, in Germany, it's GEMA. It's the Copyright Association in Switzerland. And they have a foundation uh, where they want to give also 1% of the incomes of the composers back to the... Um, to the people, and there I'm in this uh, as a um, counselor, yeah. foundation counselor, uh, where I see the other side how to spend the money, money, and that's very important for me to have both both sides to do my job in the festival. Okay, you're already giving us some interesting perspectives. Um, but let's keep it. Let's stick to this for the moment. Yeah. yeah? And uh, we move on to Bostian. What is your connection to this particular subject matter that we're talking about? Thank you, Erun. Um, I am Bostian Usenik. I come from Slovenia, from Ljubljana. Uh, I joined. Uh, I joined my choir, or as we call ourselves now, uh, our vocal orchestra, Perpetuum Jazile. Uh, back in 96, uh, I have joined the group at first as a second tenor, and then uh, two years, years later, in 98, I joined the executive board, and I stayed there for, for another 15 years. Um, in the meantime, I have become the elected president of the group, and I was that for uh, from 2002 until 2013. And uh, with that job, of course, um, I needed to deal with, uh, with funding, also with funding, also with partnerships. And um, if I am honest, at the beginning when my group was like a no-name Choir that was singing rhythmic music, a cappella music. Um, uh, the group actually lacked funding quite severely, uh, and um, the situation in in Slovenia was uh, was uh, actually not very favorable for us. Uh, in terms of our market presence, which was obviously weak at that time, we didn't get much revenues from uh, from playing concerts, from from performing, uh, and uh, from the governmental side, uh, we were not very, uh, I would say, favored by the authorities because. Um, because in our country, classical music is by far uh, the favored uh, genre of singing, uh, group singing. Uh, and uh, the authorities perceive uh, focusing only on ryth rhythmic music and a cappella music as uh, being sort of uh, not serious uh, kind of <laughs> performing and singing, um, which which means that you are more or less on your own. So, um, just to wrap it up, my brief introduction. Um, for all those reasons, in '98, we strategically decided that we are not going to count on any governmental support anymore. And we will try to set ourselves up um, on the market and with developing our product uh, reached also the level of fi funding and financing on our own way. OK. 
Okay. We are very interested to hear how you managed to do that, of course. So, um, a very cordial welcome to all the other members in the audience today. So, we've now increased our audience by 400%. Um, so, you see this is turning into a very popular topic, actually. And, of course, everybody realizes how important it is. But I need to tell you, to the newcomers, that uh, it is quite possible to ask questions, to interrupt, um, and for us to have a discussion also with you. And I hope we will also be able to discuss things together. Okay, so a very cordial welcome to all of you. And we've now heard, so we have a representative of a very, very successful festival in Switzerland, a very successful choir in Slovenia. Uh, and we now turn to our third panelist, Bart. You have a very different story to tell, I think. So please let us hear what your connection is to our topic. Absolutely. Not successful in singing, I'm sorry to say. But um, yeah, so my name is uh, Bart Dornweert. Um, I am an entrepreneur and an educator, and I sort of change roles every couple of years um, to uh, practice what I preach and preach what I've practiced, in a way. Um, I'm currently working for a, a small company called Slow Cabins, which puts nice, uh, cozy cabins into very beautiful natural, natural surroundings, and people can book overnight stays there, so that's something completely different. But I've been invited to um, participate in Leading Voices uh, to sort of share my experience uh, in, in, in business, in, in creativity, combining creativity and business, uh, and for asking a lot of sort of naive questions. That's also sort of my, my forte, I think, uh, to just learn what you are, uh, what your challenges are, what you're facing, and also come up with new perspectives and new ideas from, from my own background. Uh, because we we're just talking about the aspect of, of mindset and when it comes to teaching entrepreneurship, I think that's sort of the essence of what it's about. It is about the mindset. Like how do people uh, interpret their situation? How do they uh, collect information? How do they decide on what next steps uh, they can take? And how do they take action? And there's a lot you can learn from uh, your peers and other examples from other sectors that are very helpful. So I see my role within this event to, to provide that uh, uh, kind of a uh, contribution. Um, as for um, what I've been hearing you say about uh, funding and interacting with governments, I have my own experience with that as well. I've been a university researcher here in Holland trying to scrape together funding for my own ideas and my own projects through uh, government and interacting with government and having to deal with very recognizable um, frustrations and constraints that I was carrying at the same time here. And actually, the government was part of the reason I quit my resource job because I found that in the, in the, the free market as an entrepreneur, I could express more of my creativity than within the bounds of what, what government could provide me in that sense. Yeah. A bit about me. Yes, that's right. So here we have a more, let's say, um, a totally different approach because you are not, first and foremost, a musician who wants to achieve something with his choir or his event, but you are something who says, you know, I develop business models or I see opportunities somewhere and I think there's a way of getting there, putting, what do you call it, cabins in nice environments? Yeah, natural. For example. Natural environments. Okay. Yeah. So what I would like to do now then is to perhaps start with you um, and for you to give us a, a, a basic idea about what it is to be more business-like and to simply look into the world and to see how do I actually make something possible in life. And then we try to plant that on the festival world and then we see how it worked in your case. Is that a nice build-up of theory and practice and will give us a view into how things might work and i would like to start with you about that's good yeah, thank you um yeah so i think you should look at where where it all starts and i think that it starts with the person like who who are you what what is your identity what do you want to accomplish i think many of the people that uh, we or I see as they have, that have grown to be like successful 
in, in entrepreneurship, in creating business, in creating really well-sounding business models, are people who are well in tune with their own passion and what they want to accomplish and taking decisions that are in line uh, with their, the core, the essence of what they are. And I think that if you are able to uh, find sort of your, 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 your inner guide or your inner, inner voice, it will also help you to attract the people uh, that you collaborate with because they see the same thing that you're saying and you're able to create like an association or a small community of people of like-minded people that are help, able to help each other out and i think like most the, the nice thing about businesses is that uh, a lot uh, started off with people organizing something or making something which was relevant to them and their immediate community and surroundings and I see that that is often enough, right? Um, you're able to provide something of value, you're doing something you love, and then sometimes you get lucky and it resonates with a bigger global audience and you need to make a choice then, like, are we going to go for that bigger goal, that bigger uh, the opportunity or not? Um, uh, but that's something you need to decide later. It starts with something small that fits into tune with you, that works for your immediate surrounding community and your you support the community, the community supports you. And yeah, every successful business sort of takes it from, from that point onwards and is able to grow if it makes a choice for, for growth. And I see sort of the same analogy maybe for, for, for choirs and, and, and the communities that choirs consist of and the communities they, they interact with as well. Uh, now, I would try to plant this into the world of choirs, and I think to myself, okay, I am um, uh, uh, the chairman or a chairperson of a choir, and we want to do a certain mass by Bach next year. Hmm. I stumble because there are subsidy regulations and there are certain criteria, and I do not fit these criteria, and hmm. who do I turn to, or who are my partners in that case, and how do I... How do I turn away from those same blocked roads that I've been trying all my life to storm and always run up against? Um, how can I be more creative than that? Um, yeah, so I think my first question would be to understand, like, why, why is that blocking you? What's the, the cause for it uh, to, to, to keep you from what you want to do? I think... Often, you're, if you look very narrow-mindedly and, and sort of fixed at a certain constraint that you have to deal with, uh, then it will be a blocker, right? But if you have a bit of a more open mindset or a creative mindset, you say, no, there are workarounds, there are other op opportunities which may not look or feel like what we initially thought uh, it would look like, but they can help us out. They can uh, get us at least a start somewhere. Right, so in the case of this um, performance of Bach that you'd like to uh, organize, what would be like a, a typical blocker to get you from, from getting started, right? You have the people, I suppose. Or what are other typical constraints where you need input or help with? I'll need to input. You can also participate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the idea is that I, I need an orchestra, I need to fund the orchestra, or I need a, a big hall. Uh, and I have to pay the rent and so on. And so I need money. Okay. To, to pay people, to pay for the space. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Um, I think, that the, yeah, what I'd look for is, uh, you know, are there potential uh, collaboration with um, uh, other uh, groups or organizations within your community that would be able to, to contribute? To, to your cause or to, to your, your big idea of um, providing uh, this performance. Um, like I, I would not necessarily, because if, if, if getting the money is, is, the, is the big problem, then I'd look for ways of, of solving it without money and putting that uh, as a constraint to my decision making. Like what, what can we do uh, to organize uh, things for ourselves where uh, we're not going to pay anybody like what can we offer instead instead of money right and maybe use that as sort of a starting point for for organizing um, for organizing the performance 
right? And then you look more creatively at the space that you're going to rent. Right? What are their uh, goals and their challenges, right? Because every organization is not perfect. Every organization has to deal with some kind of an issue and problem. Perhaps you or maybe someone associated with the immediate choir that you're working with has a connection or has the opportunity to, to combine something, right? And you can provide something of value back to um, the, uh, the, the owner of the, the space where you want to perform that's not necessarily monetary, but has something else, right? So you look creatively at how you can sort of barter or exchange resources that you have and you enable your, your partner or the person or the organization that you're going to collaborate with to, to leverage that. And I think that's sort of the essence of, of partnerships, right? You should look at ways for, for bartering and exchanging and sort of keeping money outside of the equation or maybe doing something at a, at a radical discount or something that you pay them something because they need to cover like the basics, but that you can maybe do something at cost rather than also covering for like their, their, their profit margin, for instance. Right? There's always space to to play around with these things. You laugh. <laughs> you recognize it. Yeah. <laughs> so we're not always talking about money is an interesting notion, I think, that we should keep in mind during our discussion this morning. Um, our problems are not always monetary. But you're skeptical, I can see that. Is it necessary? Yes, yes, because we're streaming and otherwise the audience cannot hear. Yeah, um, not so much about the money, but the connections. I'm thinking about uh, a choir of mine, mine, most of the people are pensioned and don't have those connections or anymore. So we need to pay for things. Uh, it's not such a big problem, but there's a yeah, there's a difference between what's realistic to pay and what they're asking these times uh, for that. But but I can turn it to uh, to if we have no connections, where do we get those connections? Do you have? Yeah, I, I think that's like rarely do you have a situation where you are not connected. I think we're. In, in the, yeah, then you'd be like a hermit, maybe, <laughs> right? If if you're uh, if you come from a group of pensioners, I could I, I could understand that your your connection to the professional world or your previous work world is more remote and less accessible. But you have maybe children. Yeah, children. I, I'm thinking about that, but yeah, strangely enough, in that group, it's so. Or is it that they don't dare to ask? Is it the, the difference in, in um, age? Uh, in earlier times, when I was younger, children and the, and the elderly, the, the, the parents were singing together, doing things together. Nowadays, it's just in, in yeah, the youth does his things. And because you're not in an active um, population anymore, yeah, you're outside. A bit of the, the society and and um, it's not profitable profitable for them anymore i think to yeah to help. I, I think but, but it would also be nice to reflect with the other panelists on this but i think it starts with like intent like who are you and what do you want to do right and as soon you start voicing that to people and explaining what your goals are and what you want to do you're going to touch certain people and inspire them in a way and get them to think about how they can help contribute or maybe introduce you to uh, certain parties. And I think that's also when you're starting off with a business or a business idea. I work with a lot of young students who have also very limited professional connections because they're just you know starting in life. Um, but I also encourage them to be confident about their drive and their passion and, and, and communicate that. Uh, to people to to actively mine networks right to just get introduced through somebody that, that might have a bigger network right there are always creative ways of like expanding your reach a bit and i think you should actively voice it or encourage people to voice it and encourage them to 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 expand within the networks that they're collaborating in i give uh, um just the last time i give it <laughs> yeah. back but but a very uh, recent problem we had we had a, a concert, um, 
getting to the, the for an audience was not so much a problem. We have our audience. We would like to have some more broader with 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 younger people, but um, but we wanted to re record make a record of the concert. Our people asked that, and we used social media. We asked our members. We didn't find find a, anyone. We wanted to pay for it too. Um, if you go professional, of course, but that was not what we needed. It was just for our own use, to learn from it. Uh, but we didn't find anybody, not through the social media, uh, not through the families. Did, did you ask the audience if there was a big audience or you had... Yeah, at the end, it, it seemed that there was somebody making some pictures and they were quite good, but not a recording. Okay. But, but yeah, you don't know your, your complete audience in, yeah, before. Yeah, but so, there, 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 there's something there, right? You're able to attract a group of people to your performance. And uh, it would seem like um, an underutilization of the connection you have by just giving your performance and letting them go. Right? Is there something more that you could do, perhaps when they're um, buying tickets or uh, right that they register in some way that you're able to connect with them through email or etc it's i think it's an opportunity of a, there's a community behind there people coming in to listen to you who can also be supportive right they have an interest to to enjoy what you're what you're giving them uh, maybe they might be able to help out more and in a different way so that's an op a network or a group of people that i would definitely try to explore like with what more can can we do, right? So may, maybe there's somebody who knows somebody who can provide some kind of recording material, etc. Right? There's there's things you need to try. I think um, there. Okay, we'll, we'll <laughs> keep this for the moment, and then we will be hearing, I think, examples of how this can work, also in other fields, and then we come back to you later on. Thank you very much, Bart, for this moment. Is there anybody who has any questions? Other questions to Bart. So uh, the, all the newcomers, very cordial welcome to you too, and feel free to ask questions if you feel like that. Okay. All right. Catherine, I turn to you. Okay. So I would like to start with the identity of our festival. Uh, it's always a good thing to have a really diverse identity. So we've got the different thoughts, guiding thoughts in our festival. The first one is to offer really high quality of music. The second one is the encounter and between everybody, performers and audience. And the third one is uh, education, uh, thought of education. And we play with these three thoughts. So. It depends on the criteria foundations or governments um, uh, ask. So we looked at our criteria, uh, our thoughts meet the criteria. And these are also trends. So, for example, 20 years ago, we wrote to all foundations that they are focused on social. Um, criteria, we, they wanted to hear that we keep the children and young people away from drugs. Nowadays, it's no, it's not, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's not interesting anymore. So nowadays, also the, the high level of musical quality was 15 years ago, really a good thing to have the argumentation on it. But today, I cannot give this argument anymore. So now it's much more interesting to have the encounter. We don't talk about the high level of music now. We talk about uh, social gathering and uh, going over cultural borders and things like, like that. So it's very important to play and to argument, to have a, a big base of arguments and to change these arguments whenever you talk with, with uh, people. And then it's a big difference for me how to deal with the foundations and the government and material sponsors. So because everybody needs another language. Um, 
perhaps I start with the foundations because in Switzerland, that's maybe not the same as in, as in other countries, but in Switzerland we've got really, we've got over 13,000 foundations. They have money, over 100 milliards of money, and they Millions. spend, uh, yeah, they spend every year 2.5 milliards uh, to, to people as we. <laughs> so that's, uh, in Switzerland it's really a good thing to talk with the foundations. But the difficulty with the foundations is you have to work a lot. <laughs> but you can find the money, it's really no problem, but it's a lot of work because you have to care about all the Stiftungszweck. Yeah, their aims and goals. Yeah, their aims and goals, and you have to be exactly on the criteria to meet them. And then usually you get the money because foundations are anyway, I know that from my own work as a foundation counselor, we've got five minutes for one application. Uh, application. Yeah, so it goes very quickly. It's really, most of the time, it's just to look at the criteria, to look if the um, application meets the criteria, and then just go out. It's also the, sometimes people think that the budget is very important, but it's not very important because it's too complicated. Usually people don't understand enough to compare budgets and to see if the level of money you ask for is a, a good idea. So I think it's always better to ask for more money than for less money. <laughs> <laughs> because they make a little bit like that and then they give you 30% less as you asked and that's done with it. So, yeah. <clears throat> a, a trend that is really, it gives a lot of work um, now is that they all, all foundations have forms. So, 10, 20 years ago, we could have just one nice, um, a project proposal on yeah, paper. On paper, <laughs> yeah, and uh, to adapt it in the in the letter we send with a little bit, but now we have to fill out all these forms, so it's really a big job to do all this work. Yeah. Yes. There's a small question here. Yeah. Um, we were speaking about foundations. What kind of foundations? Could you give uh, examples in which? Category yeah, foundations, it's, it's broad. Yeah, 13,000 foundations. So uh, there are many, many, especially in Basel where I'm living, we've got as double foundations as in Zurich. <laughs> yeah, so, so there are foundations for music, for young people, for encounters, for education, for, but also for nature, for um, health, for. I like that, yeah. Even for sports, mm -hmm. um, Stiftungen or Stichtingen, and um, uh, the idea is that uh, very often people bequeath money; they they donate money into a foundation when they die or when something has happened in their lives, and there's a sum of money available. And uh, Switzerland and Liechtenstein happen to have a lot of these foundations. Many of them are also uh, open to foreign. Uh, people applying. So by all means, look in the so-called Stiftungsregister. Um, it is publicly available. You can simply sort according to your criteria and your art form, and you see what is available for you, and you just try, or you ask for help from Katrin. <laughs> I was going to ask as well of, the, of these, um, uh, uh, these organizations that you are applying to, are many of them um, government-sponsored organizations, or are they community organizations, or you know, what what type of organizations are they? So, organizations like festivals, as main. Foundations. Sorry, the foundations. Yes, that's I, I forgot the word. The foundations that you are writing the forms for are these government. Sponsored no, no. bodies, no, or it's completely separate from the government. 
they are private organizations. Yes. It's just, for example, a family uh, donating money, putting money in a fund, and then they put a board of governors over it, and they say, okay, these governors must decide whom they give the money to. And then they develop criteria, and you write to that foundation, and it's totally up to the foundation to decide on what criteria and how much money they give to whom. Then there's no government involved. So what Catherine is trying to do is to say, I work with governments and authorities. They have their special way of dealing with them. I work with foundations. That's what you started with now. And I work with other types of sponsoring. So we've got to give her a chance to go through all of these. <laughs> I just wanted to make a little clarification because actually the problem is that the term foundation is used in different countries slightly differently. Like I learned in the Netherlands that there are foundations that are handling government money in a way. So actually instead of applying to the Ministry of Culture here, you often have to apply to a foundation, which in Germany, for example, is not at all the case. And in some countries, foundations are mostly run by private people and in other countries, it's companies like in Germany, we have quite a lot of foundations that are attached to big companies that will also support cultural or social or sports projects. So I think it's always a difficulty when we speak about fundraising in international context that we have to be aware that the words don't mean the same in the different countries. Absolutely. Celia. Yes, thank you. And uh, echoing what Sonia said, um, the foundations that you have started to talk about now are private foundations, not corporate foundations. Or does this include corporate foundations? Stiftungsregister, for example, does it include corporate foundations too? That's one question. And my other question is, uh, do you observe a trend that foundations, especially corporate foundations, have their own culture program? Like they, they start to become operators themselves. And that's, of course, for us, <laughs> um, cultural act actors, operators, well, it's a change in the landscape that we have to address. That's in my, in my opinion, it's a little bit a trend, not only of the foundations, also of the government, uh, so that they start to do their own projects. And then it's much more difficult. And they also want to talk and to, to get influence on the projects. And um, we renounce on that because it would not help us to keep our identity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and corporate, I'm, I'm not sure if I understood you right, in, but you foundations in. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, there are foundations of, yes. But all these foundations are anyway quite far away from the uh, from the corporate identity a little bit maybe but I think it's it's more the, the team in sponsoring in sponsor um, material sponsors that they use the project to support their own communication strategy but if they are really a foundation a private foundation usually uh, it has nothing to do uh, with the corporation yeah, okay, Comp with the company. But, but there are some ideas. Maybe one one thing. Uh, once we we work together with Mobiliar, and there was somebody who said we want to support the festival and give, we give all our small corporations in the villages the opportunity to bring um, to guests to the festival. But they have to be active by their own. So we can give them quite a lot of money to make an event in their small uh, community, yeah. But it didn't work. <laughs> so they didn't uh, find um, uh, people. They wanted to do that. So we just closed the project. <laughs> yes. So much for the foundations, perhaps. Yeah. And then the government. The government is, um, we've got half of our money from the government. Uh, so it's a really important partner for us too. Uh, it's difficult to, in foundations, it's difficult to connect and to be present on place and to talk with them because they have too much applications, too many applications. But uh, with the government, I'm looking for this 
contact really and I ask for this contact. But it gets more and more difficult because they are anyway in some kind of bubble and they don't want to talk too much, too much uh, with uh, the, yeah, with the organizers of, of events. I don't know if you have the lottery in, in so we got the whole money from, from the town and the region from the Swiss lottery. So the idea of the lottery is it's just explained me that three weeks ago that they want to give the money back to the people of town. So they are very interested in uh, having that we have a lot of audience. That's important for them. It's the only thing that's important for them. It's very close to the town marketing. So, but there is also the cultural department of the town and they are interested in promoting the cultural scene. So they have different ideas of, of who has to say, get the money, and, but they have to have one opinion together. So it's really important. I think it's important to talk with them. Uh, in our talk, they were both of them were there. One lady said, we want that you promote the culture and the other lady say we can give you only the money if you have a lot of audience and then it's very important to have this argumentation of these uh, different thoughts because then you can give a little bit more and a little bit here so i was uh, telling them that um, i've got this speech in leading voices uh, of uh, audience development. And then the lady of the lottery said, oh, that's fantastic. That's what we want. And the other one said, no, it's not interesting for us. <laughs> so yeah, the result of this uh, talk, I don't have it yet. <laughs> uh, but there are, I think there are less criteria with the government. Um, it's, it's more to keep this, this uh, interaction and to listen very well what they need to have. And then you talk about other sponsors. Yeah, materials. Other kinds of sponsoring. Yeah, material sponsors. What you mm -hmm. were talking uh, before. So that's a really important thing. So, but it's always the deal of we give something and we receive something. Uh, so, for example, with in our festival, we get many many hotel rooms for our guests, for our staffs of the young choirs. Uh, we've got them for free. But the deal is we have them in about 20 hotels all around the town uh, and we don't have to pay for that. But the deal is that we explain the hotels, that we help them uh, to, especially after COVID now, to bring back the tourists to town. And we ask them to give us three or four hotel rooms for free but we promote them on our website and uh, we also support them on social media so now the first three hotels they supported us and we put it on social media and tell yeah we got three new sponsors of hotel so uh, please if you want to come to Basel go on our website and have a look who is supporting the festival and if you like singing support the hotels when you come to Basel and go there for an accommodation and not to another hotel. So and these are many relationships. They grown up in the last years and give you also a important support in the whole town because big hoteliers are anyway in the social network of a town. They are quite important, but it's always deal and other deal. And to be creative is also a. Um, um, I was not successful with this idea, but I can give you another idea. I wanted to work together with a bank. So I told them, give me a lot of money and we will um, help you to reach the young peoples. And I wanted to, we've got a big opening with about 3000 people in the audience. And I wanted to have a part with uh, soap bubbles when the choir is singing, we wanted to give soap bubble, things like that. Mm -hmm. And they could put the logo on it. And I explained them that 
this, um, I don't know the word for this small bottle. Everybody brings that at home and the children have it for years in their bedrooms. Uh, so it's the best promotion you can have. But they said to me that's a little bit unusual, my idea. <laughs> and they didn't want it to support it. I'm still believing that what it would be a, a good a good idea. Maybe connecting finance and bubbles is not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I think in terms of mindset, um, it, it's just important to ask because you don't know how people will respond. Yeah. Right? You can say like, oh, hotels won't go for that. If, until you've asked, you don't actually know if they'll go for it. Yeah. Right? right. So it's a question of, of trying. And sometimes it works, right? And sometimes yeah, it doesn't sometimes work. But then you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So much for the Youth Choir Festival. Thank you very much, Kathleen. Now we're going to you, Oshan. Yes. What can you tell us about your Perpetuum Jazile experience? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm quite amazed by, by the things that you have been explaining. Um, but I. I think I'm not wrong saying that this is a special craft that you need to master, uh, filling, out, filling out all the forms and all the chasing all the tenders and stuff. But in, in our case, uh, we, th we actually stumbled upon two things, uh, two major things actually. Uh, in Slovenia, uh, of course, uh, the network of uh, these foundations is uh, really non-existent. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So mainly, if we're talking about tenders and and and, and um, fundraising like that, uh, you would be dealing with a governmental uh, authority or or a foundation that is under a specific ministry, um, which has a special policy, which uh, even narrows your uh, ability to fulfill the criteria uh, which uh, which at the end comes to a, to a blunt fact that either you apply for that this and that or that tender and lose your artistic identity or you just want to keep your identity and you just ignore that you know can i say something yeah sure sure is it really such a polarity yeah because sometimes i think also we've got for example in switzerland on we got also mm -hmm. fund of the mesh of the nation mm -hmm. and we've got four languages in switzerland mm -hmm. so the nation says we really want to have your festival only if you bring all these four language regions together. Mm -hmm. But that could be also a chance. So I very often look at how mm -hmm. to bring the ideas together. Some ideas yeah. are silly. I yeah. agree. And then I put it away. But there are also ideas mm -hmm. they could be a chance to develop mm -hmm. the, um, the own business. So what kind of ideas do you, your government has? I don't know. Of, of course, they are they are uh, all part of the European Union tenders, and they they chase specific goals. And you know, it's these are sort of broad ideas that have been developed in the recent years. Not not maybe at the time that we would need money money from them, and now we're not. So. Um, uh, fulfilling uh, tender criteria uh, takes time from from the group, yeah. And if you are dealing with the, the group that is uh, set up uh, from, for example, amateur singers for for peop from people that are uh, that ha they have everyday jobs, their own careers, their students, um, the. The, the amount of uh, the, the, the the criteria of time becomes so uh, precious that you just cannot afford to dedicate your time to fulfilling the the tender criteria, and you would just like to focus on your own artistic aims. 
So th this is the, I think, the major, also a major uh, um, divergence of, of um, these, these uh, founding uh, uh, directions. Um, the way our group, uh, Perpetuum Gesile, uh, approached things was um, back in 98, and I will talk a bit more in detail in, in my tomorrow's lecture, um, is that we uh, strategically decided that we want to upgrade our product our brand, our music, our performance to such a level that the environment that we are, that we are um, performing for is just not able to ignore us anymore. Mm -hmm. So, as I already uh, explained to Jeroen uh, yesterday when we talked over the phone, uh, we just set up a strategic goal and then uh, started to walk this path of million steps until we actually reach the level where companies want to work with us, want to be seen with our brand together, that the government wants us to represent the country when the, the Slovenia is presiding the European Union to have a concert tour around Europe. So actually we went that way um, and we actually did it uh, very successfully. So if uh, in, in 10 years time, for example, um, the result was clear. Uh, from being a uh, no name uh, to be to becoming a strong brand, even uh, globally, internationally recognized, thanks to YouTube presence, of course, of our music, uh, and this this was actually the very successful approach that we uh, we managed to to to, to execute. Okay, and can you explain to us some of the key factors that you used on your way to achieving that? Yes. Um, actually, we, uh, when we decided to, to start with this, with this strategy, we actually um, wanted to, on one hand, wanted to develop the product. On the other hand, we wanted to avoid the obstacles. Um, to develop the product, uh, we focused on uh, our singers' satisfaction with doing things, with, uh, with performing, with the creating music. And this relates to Bart's, uh, uh, to Bart's, um, remarks about the importance of passion in what you're doing and what you want to be doing. Uh, and uh, parallel with that, we wanted to increase our listeners' satisfaction. We wanted to create attractive programs. We wanted to, to perform in such a way that we are connecting our audience at our concerts. Um, we uh, wanted to get rid of the the constraints that, for example, very acoustic uh, halls have um, that we can perform anywhere. So we set up um, set up our special sound system, uh, and in the end, of course, it was a gradual a gradu gradual um, progress. But in the end, uh, for example, in '96 when I joined. Um, uh, the number of people at our annual, one annual concert was a hundred family in a room like this. That was in 98. In 2013, we sold out two uh, uh, sports arenas for 20,000 people. So this was actually a massive leap. Um, but but uh, but. Uh, 
the, the steps to get there were micro micro and over many years, but with a strategic goal. Um, and one very important aspect of getting there was also the decision in 98 that all the money that we get gets reinvested. So we decided not to divide money among singers or to, uh, you know, to disperse it, but that we reinvest into things that are go going to get our product bigger, better, more visible, and stronger. And this actually was, I think, the stronger, the, the, the strongest impetus that actually make, uh, made us um, being able uh, to grow uh, in such a in such a pace, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Any questions to Bostian? Yes, <laughs> Daphne. <laughs> <laughs> It's a very interesting story, and I saw you on stage, so I can completely understand why it's <laughs> why it's a very interesting product. Um, I'm wondering, did you have to make any compromises to your project or adapt your project to make it suitable to your uh, to the audiences and to the market? In other ways, did you have to leave certain parts behind and maybe not have that artistic aim that you originally had? because you had to adapt it to the audience, or was it just a perfect match? You understand my question. Uh, yeah, that's a very broad question. I mean, you, you, need to, you need to make adjustments all the time. Um, when, you're, when you're aiming uh, a strategic goal, uh, getting there is, is not a straight line. It's a, it's a winding road, you know. At, at a certain stage, uh, you need that aspect of, 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 of things. Uh, in a few years, you, do, you don't need that anymore because you, you have already incorporated, incorporated it uh, into, your, um, uh, in, into your business. Then you need something else, and you need somebody else. And then you, you know, it's always, always a zigzag uh, uh, thing. Um, and um, the only constant in every development actually is change. Yeah. Um, uh, and there are, of course, some things that you just cannot plan, but you, uh, you, you, you try to make it better and better, better, um, you know. Um, yeah, so kind of each yeah. step you exactly. try to see what you need and what are new opportunities yes, to develop yes. and then... Yeah, yeah. The goal is somewhere there, but you decided yes, step yes, by step. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we started with a passion and with a clear potential. Uh, then if, if I just focus on our three uh, music directors that, that were, of course, more, most important for the group. The first one was uh, with the group the first 17 years. Uh, from 83, when our group was established, to 2000, and then he just did not uh, share um, these goals of the group anymore. So he left the group. We re re replaced him with a very well-known in Slovenia music producer who opened a lot of doors in the media for us, he was, who was also a great arranger um, and, and brought that aspect as well. And when we parted with him 10 years later, uh, we got together with uh, Pieter Carlson from The Real Group, and we started working with him, and he, uh, he dragged uh, um, some other aspects of, of the group's potential out. So it was another push, another, you know, um, perpetuum mobile. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so it's yeah, it's it's in 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 waves, and uh, but it's along the trend line upwards. Yeah. yeah, and you dare to say goodbye to things that didn't work, which is I think also important as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's very important. Uh, even even I was, for example, uh, I became with the success of the group with the with the group needs. 
um, I was requested by the executive board if I would, uh, if I would become a, a full-time manager of the group. So I left my career being the business journalist and editor uh, to become a fully professional manager of the group. And I've been that for the next 10 years. And I, I was um, until I quit, like just before Corona. Um, <laughs> but I'm still part of the group, uh, even though I'm just on stage right now, and it's uh, the best job now. <laughs> <laughs> that's in, that's an, yeah. another nice word. We have to uh, come to an end uh, of the meeting, unfortunately. But it's nice that uh, we've now had two people who say they've got the best job. Yeah. <laughs> you see, so we're talking about something which is really exciting. We thought we were going to talk about money, but in fact we're talking about passion and identity. We're talking about creativeness. We're not talking about music, we're talking about a product yeah, that we're trying to put in the market or that we're trying to find ways for to place in that market. Um, we're talking about partnerships and we're talking about looking at partnerships in different ways. They might be very diverse and diverse partners require diverse strategies to deal with them at all different levels. And we deal with flexibility because things may change. They do not remain the same over time. We heard that in all three uh, panel contributions today. I would like to thank the panelists and I would like to thank the members of the audience today and I would like to thank everybody at home, all the millions who are there and who have been listening to us and we wish you all the very best of luck in your endeavors in music and partnerships. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.